of owning a cafe and other heroic deeds by Buwe the Tistero. Chapter 31. Enter Shiritoko Tomoko. Arriving at that Neko Nakama shelter, the biggest and arguably best one out of the three in Musutafu, showed a wave to the woman the same age as himself, who he'd had a few video calls with across the week as she bolted out of the electric glass screen doors to gesture wildly at the bus as they entered the small empty car park. To see her now? Well, ah! Welcome, welcome, everyone! You realize that his initial impression of her? I bet correct. Hi, hi, oh, you're awesome too! What are those cat buck cookies for me? Yummy! With her enthusiasm, energetic mannerisms, and coloring, it was just like having a Zuko in stereo. My name is Shirotoko Tomoko, but you can call me Ragda, okay? Because they're my favorite kind of kitty cat. Oh, and here, every visitor gets a knuckle ear and headband. Aren't they adorable? Watching as the hyperactive woman seemed to teleport around himself and the children, the box of baked goods he'd given her already deposited in the small tote bag looped across her slender milky shoulders, showed the head to cover his laugh when it came to Dabi and Tobra receiving theirs. The sharp, bewildered look is larger and sent him, and then hilarious. Then the tots fawning over their new accessories, Kamenari Koji and Inko diligently took pictures of them whilst Toshi skipped to his side as smaller and reaching for his. He returned the gesture, nodded it at the rather skirted woman, and followed her as she led them up the three concrete steps to the same doors she'd bowled through earlier. Okay, guys! This is the lobby. If you look around at the walls, you can see all of the Neko and Kaneko we've successfully rehomed since this shelter opened ten years ago. She called her white paw gloved hands flinging around in all directions to point out the various fluffy creatures. Listening to the children coo, the air conditioning of the chamber helping to dust some of the heat they'd felt outside off, he and the oldest Midoriya approached the welcome desk to sign them all in whilst the teenagers approached the touchscreen computer panel to his right, their fingers dutifully flicking through the adoptable cats. Now then, all of our precious kitty cats have had all their shots, have been spayed, treated for fleas, and worms. The emerald there volunteer advised her slender figure crouching down to be at the children's level. However, we just need to go through a few cat care rules before we go through to see him, okay? Okay! The dad scores eagerly. My dear guys, I'm so pleased! She grinned back, her large eyes sparkling as she held up her paws. The whisker makeup she wore across her pretty face, crunching up as she smiled. Number one, most candies are okay with loud noises and quick movements, but to be polite, we're all going to move slowly and not yell, okay? Having to cover his mouth again for fear of offending the boy, Shona also heard the teen stifle chuckles as in unison all of the kids turned to Gatsky, who scowled, folded his arms, and glared back at them. What y'all staring at me for, huh? I'm not that loud, he growled before purposely snapping his jaw shut. <laughs> okay, two, if you'd like to pet any of our furry friends, come and ask me and I'll get them out of their crits for you, okay? We have a get-to-know-you playpen that you can sit in for them to get a good sniff of you, all right? Then all of their names effectively penned, he bowed at the kindly old man who'd shuffled the papers and bowed at him in turn. He knew it probably wasn't showing on the outside and as irrational as it was, he couldn't help but feel really excited, too. One of the few dreams he'd allowed for himself was actually on the cusp of being realized. And our final rule, Chibi Tachi, when you're handling the cats, be very gentle. Don't touch their tails, and if they look as though they don't want to be touched, be respectful and let them walk away from you, all right? I'll be on hand to help you out, and since they all have claws and teeth, just be mindful, okay? She offered her silliness momentarily shifting to more serious. We have the most amazing first aid wipes that'll heal any scratches up straight away, too, all right? Nodding enthusiastically, Tomoko then clapped her novelty ends together, stood up, spun around, and marched towards another set of double doors. Come on, my kitties! Let's go meet some kitty cats! Walking into the large area, the sound of mews, meows, and yowls echoing inside the airy rectangular room, Shona hummed thoughtfully at the three rows that stretched down and across the three walls. The wall which housed the doors they just walked through, merely hosting a hand-washing station, a first aid kit, and fire extinguisher. Whereas at the center of the room, the big playpen lay. It was filled with a few cat treat towers, scratching posts, and some soft toys on wand tethers for any visitors to use. The blue ground looked plush, and the outer walls were made of similarly soft square blocks for people to sit on. 
Shuni? Blinking, he realized that the children and teens were still standing near him. Uh, he thought that they'd have gone to see the curiously observing felines straight away. Oh no! How many cats are you gonna adopt? Ajita shyly asked, cocking his head at the child before looking to the others. He helped out a laugh. I told you that I wanted each of you to have one, didn't I? At the odd gasps, Denki and Kazuki whispering a quick, Dude, you were right! He was serious! Yeah, he doesn't lie, does he? The cafe owner shook his head. Well, go on then. He urged with a little shooing motion that had them very quietly, such good kids, cheering and carefully wandering to the barred enclosures. Then his brows lifting, he saw that the teenagers hadn't moved. Do you two want to rescue one? He asked a little surprised. Hadn't they both told him that they were looking forward to having some fur balls around the place? What? They returned their faces a little lax and shocked, whilst Inko grinned at them as she and Atitame Koji also ventured into the area where Tomoko was quickly, yet somehow calmly, bouncing around from small group to small group of children. So, nine kids? Really? No. He upped his shoulders rolling. I'm going to select one too, so that makes ten, doesn't it? He said as though it was obvious, his right hand squeezing the flame quirk user's shoulder affectionately. The cat space in the cafe will be big enough to comfortably house them, and it works out cheaper to buy cat litter and food in bulk, so... He grinned. Let's go see who wants to come home with us, shall we? Looking at the various breeds, colors, and sizes of felines within the room, there were 50 cats in the facility, damn he couldn't take all of them, could he? Shona also kept his ears out for what the kids, Inko and Koji-san, were saying before, with a blink, he found Tomoko in his personal space. That smile, friendly though it was, seemed a little unnerving at such close range. Have you fallen in love yet? She asked him with that Cheshire grin. Um. Because if it's not too bold of me to say, she continues while leaning in further, I think there's a special lady you should meet. Was, was she coming on to him or... Okay, he said cautiously before with a gasp he couldn't hold in, one of those self-pawed gloves had latched onto his wrist, and with a strength which belied her slight build, the tank-topped woman pulled him across the room to view a crate on the top shelf. A crate that contained a golden-eyed Jet Bombay cat standing protectively in front of two smaller kits, her slit irises narrowing at him imperiously with a flash of teeth. She was enchanting. Yeah, I knew you'd like her, the cat costume woman preened excitedly. She's a very special case, and well, she may not look particularly friendly right now, but she's a sweetheart who we want to rehome with her sons, you know? Nodding carefully, Shoda stood back a little as Tomoko leaned in to undo the barred door's latch, the mother haunching up defensively when the barrier swung away. Does she have a name? Ah, uh, she probably did once. The other said softly, her eyes filled with an understanding sympathy. She was brought into the shelter heavily pregnant underweight, and if you can see just under her eye there, we think she's been living on the street for a while and have been attacked. She sighed. Her fur was all matted and falling out, but with a little time and care we got her fighting fit again. She grinned. I just call her hey hey. Don't I speak girl, hmm? Loosely curling his fingers inwards, as he'd watched cat handlers Lou online. He slowly presented the digits for inspection. As the older cat grumbled a little, it was the kittens who skirted her to have a sniff before rubbing themselves against his hand and wrist. Goddamn everything. It was just as wonderful as he'd hoped it would be. Then he carefully withdrew, the smaller creatures following whilst their mother, clearly exasperated, and huffed. Chuckling fondly, he offered his arm as a ramp and watched as the kits, delighted to get out of the cage, skittered down the length of it towards his waves of similarly ebony hair, his other hand moving to carefully hover near just in case the sleek, purring pair could get perches on his skin or t-shirt fabric. Hey, hey, you're a naturally so son! His onlooker offered before, to their continued surprise, Hui Hui made her approach, the gold of her eyes cautious before she leapt to the ground and circled around him with a questioning meow, slowly easing down to the floor, ensuring that the kittens were secure. He sat down cross-legged and gently eased her boys onto his black jean-covered thighs. His fingers offered up his toys whilst Tomoko quietly knelt beside him. 
studying the display, the oldest of the Bombay trio rubbed against his knee before slinking into his lap, her face butting against his midsection before she pooled to sit with a yawn. Well, looks like you're the one who's been adopted, huh? Demico smiled warmly before, at the light gasps behind her, they both turned to see Hitoshi and Nizuku peering at the arrangement, the little hands moving to their cheeks in awe. Oh, Shoni, you're so pretty! Izuku quietly gushed. Can we go and say hi? Nodding, each child moving to sit beside him, Hui Hui huffed, regarded the approaching humans, and then put her head back down with a sigh, her eyes closing while she rumbled at the purr. Then, at their mother's contentment, or the lack of her critical eye and protective stance, the kittens lolloped their way to explore the children closest to them, their noses twitching as they allowed tentative fingers to run through their coats, tickle behind their ears, and scratch under chins. Hee <laughs> well, I guess I'll just head on over to the registry sheet and put down Hui on our kits, eh? Within half an hour, ten cats had been selected, and together, the humans carefully took their charges to the pen to see how they'd get along. Since the cafe would essentially be their forever home, because he'd offer in-house adoption if someone wanted to help pay a certain cat's living costs, everyone needed to get along. Okay, let's see who we need to add to the register, hmm? Ojago, her little arms all a quiver with how careful she was being, had a fluffy moose colored regum of an adult with large eyes and a tongue cutely sticking out. This is Hime, she introduced, because she's a princess. Nodding and cooing, the emerald haired volunteer smiled approvingly. <laughs> she's eight years old, which means she's becoming a grand old lady who's going to need lots of cuddles, gentle grooming, and a nice warm bed to snuggle in. However, she's a strong, playful dame, and her brain can lift up to eighteen years, too. She advised, then slowly stepping behind her best friend, came a serene-looking Tsuyu, her own arms cradling a jade-eyed calico juvenile, who was predominantly white with patches of gray and black, while Dinky, his grin magnetic, walked alongside her with a similar calico of roughly the same age, only this one had blue eyes and a patch of yellow amidst the gray and black. I like to call him Kyoro, so he always knows me. The frog-featured child offered, her cheeks pinking cutely. And this boy is raging god of lightning! Her preschool playmate added, the cat purring madly as it received a scratch just behind its left ear whilst its twin played fascinated with strands of dark green hair. The teens came next, the pair sitting next to him before they carefully added the felines they'd picked to the plush ground. Homer. Dobby said to Tomiko when the regal one-eyed Siamese sat upon his sneakered foot, its duck face releasing a bore yawn whilst the kittens tumbled all over at the mere lounging hine. Then its palm tail a little crooked, Tomra tried to replace an older Japanese bobtail onto the floor. However, with a flash of teeth, the mostly gray cat plonged itself back into the boy's lap with a huff, its amber eyes daring him to try and dislodge him. You're a cranky old man, ain't you? The 16-year-old snickered. Gigi is what I'm calling you, Grandpa Grumpus. He added whilst Tomoko cried, not the gush. Oh, we've been trying to find a home for him for well over a year. She said, her eyes tearing right alongside Inko's because, of course, it's so hard to convince people that a cat over nine is worth taking. Snorting, his gloved hands gently running through the thick ruff of fur, coloring the similarly gray-eyed feline's neck, the shorter teen huffed out a quite People are idiots, whilst the flingboard user carefully reached out to give the solidly purring creature a light tickle, which was happily received. Then with Hitoshi and Izuku merrily enjoying Haruto, that was my dad's name, and Hiro, of course, the felines all either getting along or completely ignoring the playful youth in favor of human touch, Hui Hui had similarly refused to leave his lap, not that he minded. They were only awaiting Eijiro and Katsuki. The dark-haired tot arriving first. Everybody, this is Red Riot, he announced while the dark brown almost red oriental long hair mewled in his arms, those blazing amber eyes full of life as it literally bounced into the pen and nosedived into a clearly non-plus Ime's fluffy flank to wriggle and wriggle around. Ah, good choice! This one is one of the youngest residents and the last of the litter who was brought in 
a few weeks ago, Tamako said, her stylist scribbling down the feisty kitten's name, her eyes filled with glee. This breed is highly sociable and gets along with most cats and humans, she told the hugely grinning boy. He'll be perfect in a cafe environment. In fact, with the exception of Gigi, who may mean a little more coaxing, I'm certain they'll all be as... Meow! <laughs> Blinking, their eyes turning as one. The group smiled regardless of the sweat drops multiplying against their temples as the rambunctious blonde, a tiger-striped golden tabby planted firmly atop a delighted hen, marched over to the area. This one! The crimson eyed child began his arms folding haughtily. Is the best kitten ever! He announced before, with the ease of someone who'd handled cats before. He efficiently scooped the teeth flashing kit off of his head before placing it into the box area, his smirk devilish as the scrappy Kaneko bounded around its pedals. Sharing a look with Ingo, who was still behind him, and the teens. Dobby was dipped, Toma was face bombing, Shota couldn't help his chuckle before with a blink. He watched as Red Riot, clearly feeding off the yowling, boisterous kitten's energy, began to bounce at and play with him. Hotaru, Hiro, and Rijin were, of course, only too pleased to get wrapped up in the game of chase as well. So ridiculously cute! Hey, <laughs> what's the little fighter's name then, huh? The shelter registered Oprah asked. Her painted face alight with excitement. At the flicker of mischievous joy playing across those red eyes, his right index finger rubbing under his nose arrogantly, Katsuki then planted his little fists upon his hips before proudly saying, Baku Katsugo. Ah, but of course. The milky-skinned young woman tried bust the Midoriya tried to add the laughter. The teens shook their heads at Danky, alongside a starry-eyed angel, let out, Whoa! The cafe owner snorted. Key explosion manner, okay? The bewildered woman tried to smile as she swayed on her feet. Any particular reason? She asked whilst all of the kittens, Carol, now having been shoved into the mix, bounded around. Because that's going to be my hero name when I get my license. We set up our agency and they all help me become the number one pro over all my He preened. We're going to be the best of the best. So even though I'm half the title, no one will mess with any of us. He furthered with a nod that had his two families in tears. The other children offered cheaper smiles except for Itoshi, who joined the teens in huffing and shaking his head. Oh, you all want to be pros, yeah? The cat makeup wearer stated, her chest puffing up proudly. I have a hero license, don't you know? She brained before, her shoulders sagging, the smile dropping off of her pretty face. She added, Oh, well, I wasn't as lucky as you guys, she admitted. I want to should get too high and try as I might. I just couldn't fit in. She furthered a little self-consciously, her right flip-flop covered foot making a circle on the floor as she looked down at it. Everyone there was either super serious or kind of creepy, and I, well... I can't help but be enthusiastic, and I'd love to add acrobatics to my farming style, and that, that didn't go down well, you know. She um before gesturing around the cattery. So now, I'm studying economics at MU. I work in a Starbucks with a bunch of snippy teenage girls who don't like me and come here to volunteer every chance I get. She tried to smile with a shrug. You kids be sure to stick together and look out for each other, all right? She further, before walking away to the back wall to no doubt type the cat's names into the computer stood there. Watching her go, Shota couldn't help the sympathy that bloomed in his chest, even as, ha-ha, her golden gaze locked onto the warring kittens, gave him a nudge, jumped down, and broke the tumbling mess of furry limbs up, her glare brokering no argument, as even Baskatsugo sneezed and plonked his furry butt down. Show, sure. Dobby said slowly, his toad spiked with warning. I can see what you're thinking. Well, and... The teen edged whilst leaning into him. Just stop and think for a minute. She... I'm sure she's great. He tried whilst trying to frame his words tactfully. But she's a whole bunch of energy, isn't she? Like Izuku, it's stereo. He affirmed with a nod. But we need someone to help with the kids, don't we? Well, yeah. The scar D conceded while Stoma chuckled knowingly. Uh, she's clearly cafe experienced too, right? Yes, but... And who do we know who might like that kind of energy? Who radiates the same energy? Well, 
outside of Izuku. Hmm? He pushed, and just like that, he watched as the flame quirk user let out a long defeated sigh. You want to see a long cat Mike Knight, don't you? He huffed a smile, tugging his lips despite himself. I think she'd make a good fit. He nodded whilst the children, alongside Koji, San, and Inko, who were diligently cooing and taking photographs, attended to the now calmer cats and kittens, whilst Hahwe regarded Homura, gave him a neck nuzzle, and returned to her perch with a chuff. You saw how broken-hearted she was. He furthered, his gaze moving back to the woman. And it'd be better for her to work with us than in a corporate institution with people she clearly doesn't like. He added before with a grin. 5,000 yen says that she'll grow on you. He stated, his right hand offered in a shake. You're on, not so old guy. He smirked whilst grabbing the other's hand and making the deal-binding gesture. I'm also calling bankruptcy right here, right now. He continued with a jaunty cocking of his brows. But don't you worry, I'll be sure to give you a loan with a decent interest rate when I become rich and famous, okay?